Hello everyone, today we'll be going over esomeprazole or Nexium. Let's go ahead and start with patient counseling points. This drug is used to treat acid reflux, heartburn, and any syndrome caused by lots of stomach acid. It can also treat and prevent ulcers due to too much acid production. So Nexium comes in different forms. We have a tablet, capsule, and a packet. But generally, you want to take the drug at least one hour before a meal with a full glass of water. You can split open the capsule and mix it with applesauce if you're unable to swallow or mix with liquid for feeding tubes. For the powder packet, you'll want to mix the packet and dissolve it in a 5 milliliter water. Mix and drink, then you can rinse the cup with more water and drink to get the remaining medication residue. So some common side effects you may experience include headache, stomach pain, gas, dry mouth, and upset stomach. Some rare but serious side effects that you need to call the doctor right away include any allergic reactions, big weight loss, bone pain, or any severe form of diarrhea that includes stomach pain or cramps and a very loose and watery stool. Now we'll go more in details about this medication. So esomeprazole is a PPI or a proton pump inhibitor. This class of medications can cause profound and prolonged reduction of stomach acid production. So esomeprazole suppresses gastric acid secretions by specific inhibition of hydrogen and potassium ATPase in the gastric parietal cell. By acting specifically on the proton pump, esomeprazole blocked the final step in acid production, thus reducing gastric acidity. This effect is dose-related up to a daily dose of 20 to 40 milligrams and leads to inhibition of gastric acid secretion. Now for indication and dosing. For erosive esophagitis, initial dose is 20 milligrams to 40 milligrams once daily for 4 to 8 weeks. If in complete healing, you may continue for additional 4 to 8 weeks. Maintenance 20 milligrams once daily, but do not exceed beyond six months. Now for heartburn, you may use 20 milligrams once daily for 14 days. May be repeated after four months if needed. And then for H. pylori eradication, it's a type of bacteria that enters your digestive tract and causes sores that eventually lead to stomach cancer if left untreated. There's multiple different options for treatment. We have chlorithromycin triple regimen. You may use Nexium 20 to 40 milligrams twice daily in combination with chlorithromycin 500 milligrams twice daily and either amoxicillin 1 gram twice daily or flagell 500 milligrams three times daily. Continue the regimen for 14 days. Then we have bismuth quadruple regimen. You may use Nexium 20 milligrams twice daily in combination with tetracycline 500 milligrams four times daily, metronidazole 250 milligrams four times daily, or 500 milligrams three to four times daily, and either bismuth substrate 120 to 300 milligrams four times daily. And then for a concomitant regimen, you may use 20 milligrams twice daily in combo with amoxicillin 1 gram twice daily, clarithromycin 500 twice daily, and either flagell or tenidazole 500 milligrams twice daily. And you may continue this regimen for 10 to 14 days. And we also have sequential regimen. You may use 20 milligrams twice daily plus amoxicillin 1 gram twice daily for five to seven days, then continue as a meprazole along with clarithromycin 500 milligrams twice daily, and either metronidazole or tenidazole 500 milligrams twice daily for five to seven days. And we also have the hybrid regimen. You may use Nexium 20 milligrams twice daily plus amoxicillin one gram twice daily for seven days. Then continue as a meprazole and amoxicillin along with chlorithromycin 500 milligrams twice daily 
and either metronidazole or tinidazole, 500 milligrams twice daily for seven days. And lastly, we have the levofloxacin triple regimen. We may use 20 milligrams twice daily of Nexium in combo with amoxicillin 1 gram twice daily and levofloxacin 500 milligrams once daily and continue this regimen for 10 to 14 days. Then we have the NSAID induced gastric ulcers. Um, you may use esomeprazole 20 milligrams daily for eight weeks. And then we have short-term treatment of GERD. You may use 20 milligrams or 40 milligrams once daily for if you are symptomatic. Now for off-label use, we have Barrett's esophagus. It's a change in cell lining of your esophagus more common in people with GERD. So you utilize standard treatment doses of 20 or 40 milligram once daily. And if it's poorly controlled, reflux symptoms or esophagitis may require twice daily dosing. Now for the isonophilic esophagitis, you may use 20 to 40 milligrams twice daily for an eight week trial. And then once eight week trial is complete and remission is achieved, the dose may be gradually lowered to an individualized maintenance level. Now for dyspepsia, you may use 40 milligrams once daily for up to eight weeks. And then as mentioned previously, here are some common side effects that people experience when taking this drug. So headache, diarrhea, nausea, flatulence, decreased appetite, constipation, and dry mouth. Now for warnings and concerns related to adverse events, we have C. difficile, um, use of proton pump inhibitors may increase risk of CDAD, especially in hospitalized patients. Consider CDAD diagnosis in patients with persistent diarrhea that does not improve. Use the lowest dose and shortest duration of PPI therapy appropriate for the condition being treated. Then we also have fractures. Um, there's an increased risk of incidence of osteoporosis related bone fracture of the hip, spine, or wrist may occur with PPI therapy. So patient on high dose or long-term therapy of more than one year should be monitored. You use the lowest effective dose for the shortest duration of time. Use vitamin D and calcium supplementation and follow appropriate guidelines to reduce risk of fractures in the patient at risk. Then we also have hypomagnesemia reported Rarely, usually would prolong PPI use of more than three months, most cases of more than one year of therapy. You may be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Severe cases may cause tetany, seizures, and cardiac arrhythmias. So hypomagnesemia may lead to or exacerbate hypocalcemia in patients at risk. Hypomagnesemia may also lead to hypokalemia. Hypomagnesemia and hypocalcemia may be corrected by magnesium and or calcium supplementation, although discontinuation of esomeprazole may be necessary. Then we also have vitamin B12 deficiency. So prolonged treatment of more than two years may lead to vitamin B12 malabsorption and subsequent vitamin B12 deficiency. The magnitude of the deficiency is dose-related and association is stronger in females and those younger in age of less than 30 years. Prevalence is decreased after the discontinuation of therapy. And lastly, we have the fundic gland polyps. The use of proton pump inhibitors increase risk of fundic gland polyps, especially with long-term use of more than one year. It may occur without symptoms, but nausea, vomiting, or abdominal pain may occur. GI bleeding and or anemia may occur with ulcerated polyps. 
Diagnosis of polyps may also increase risks from small intestinal blockage, so the use of lower dose and shorter duration of PEPI therapy appropriate for this condition being treated. And that's it for Esomeprazole. Thank you.